The title of the message is Dead Men Walking. <laughs> Dead Men Walking. As you all know, and you've probably seen the movies, and some of you all being here probably worked at a prison where when that man or woman is released from a cell to go to their demise, because they've been on death row, one of the guards says, Dead Man Walking! Dead man walking. And they do it, thanks to us, and I would have tripped over it for sure. They already have condemned him to death, or her. She's physically, or he's physically alive. There's nothing different. They're still working, all their body parts are working, they're just dressed a little different because they're behind bars. But they got these prison guards around them, and if you put them in a prison guard uniform, they would look the same as everybody else. They're alive, but they said, dead man walking. Mm. Because they're already condemned to death. Already condemned to death. Some states actually look at them as a dead man or woman already. Because it's over. You know, there's Christians like that. There might be some in here today. Look just like everybody else. Everybody's sitting here in a warm body. I won't say hot body again. <laughs> Everybody's sitting here in a warm body. Pumps. Your, your pump's working. It's beep, 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 beep. There's no problem. The thump, the thump. Got the blood going. You look just like everybody else, but you're a dead man walking. Amen. Only you know that. I don't. But you do. Every time I say man, you can put woman in there if you're a female. Amen dead person walking there's only yourself knows whether you're a dead man walking David didn't want to be a dead man walking David had seen a lot of dead men walking in his lifetime I'm going to read from Psalms 51 and some of us love this song some of us sing it it's on a country gospel CD that I have. Verse 10 says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit in me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto the joy of thy salvation. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. It means he had it. He knew what it was like. And a pulled me with thy free spirit. David is praying that his Holy Spirit is not taken from him. He's praying that the Spirit of God is not taking from him. Are you getting this? He doesn't want to be a dead man walking. Because when the Spirit of God is not with us, we are dead men walking. Amen. David has seen it way too much. All the way back to the, his ancestor Adam. Adam had it perfect. Adam, everything was perfect. Paradise. Sinlessness. Blessedness. Better than we can ever imagine. No matter how good of imagination you got. It's better than that. And he was cast out. Of Eden. Away from the spirit of God. Adam became a dead man walking. Mm. And he wasn't tricked. He chose to eat. From what he was told he couldn't have. Turn to Genesis chapter 2 if you want to follow along. We're going to look at a few people. Adam being the first one. We're going to look at a few people that became dead men walking because they dabbled with sin. Yeah, we still use that word in this church. <laughs> Amen. We don't justify our actions so that we can become dead men walking. The church needs to hear this because there's dead men walking inside the church all over this country. Genesis 2. 16 and 17 says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Wow! Every tree! But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest therefore thereof thou shalt surely die. But you can eat of every other tree. There was only one he wasn't supposed to eat from. Every other tree. Woo! But as you all know the story, and I'll just skip on down to Genesis chapter 3. 
22 through 24. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also the tree of life. That's another one of the trees he was allowed to eat from. And eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword turning every which way to keep the way of the tree of life. He had it made to live forever but now he was condemned to die. He was a dead man walking condemned to death for being disobedient to God. In Ephesians 2.1 it says dead in trespasses and sins. We become dead in our trespasses and our sins. When we justify our life instead of confronting what we're doing wrong. And the church has jumped on board with this folks. A lot of churches have. But see in the beginning Adam had it perfect and he knew. He chose. He wasn't tricked. The serpent didn't trick them. They chose to do what they did. Because of disobedience, man had lost his right to eat from the tree of life. To live forever and ever and ever. Can you imagine what the population would be like right now? We talk about population being too much and we've got to do something. Just think of... Whew, banished. Adam's a dead man walking. See, he lost the Spirit of God from within. Now, I want to make sure you understand too that this is still this is still the same God from Luke 15 that waited patiently at the father's house for the prodigal son to return but it's also the holy God that hates sin and he will not be around it he did not go out and chase the prodigal son the father waited at the father's house for the son to return the son realized repented and asked for forgiveness and he there was a banquet. A huge banquet. It's the same God. The same Father. We try to separate that. Some people, again, try to separate with things that we're doing today is okay because this is a New Testament church. It's the same God. He still hates sin. And it still condemns us to death. Wages of sin is death. It's on all your church shirts. Amen. The wages of sin is death. It hasn't changed. So if we sin without repentance, we are dead men walking. Ouch. The second guy is, a, is Saul. And we all know Saul's fall. And Saul was a king, man. You go to 1 Samuel 15, if you're taking notes, uh, I'm going to read verses 10 and 11. It's, uh, this is after Samuel didn't do what he was supposed to. I mean, Saul didn't. And I think you all know, you know, Saul was supposed to annihilate everything. And he didn't. He had King Agag and a bunch of other stuff that was good. Everything that was good, he kept. But there wasn't supposed to be any spoils. In verse 10 it says, Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel saying, It repenteth me that I have set Saul to be king. It repenteth me that I have set Saul to be king. For he has turned back from following me and hath not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel and he cried unto the Lord all night. I could do a sermon on this for a whole week. Just this two, these two verses. The Lord repented because he put a person in a position to do something and they didn't become obedient to it. Ouch! God calls us all to do something. And things are taken from us because we don't do what He called us to do. Maybe you're supposed to be a good husband. Maybe you're supposed to be a good wife, a good father, a good mother, a good brother. Maybe you're supposed to be a good brethren. And keep your mouth shut about other brethren. Somebody need to hear that. That wasn't in my notes. Glory to God. Skipping on down to 15, 22, and 23. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is greater than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. 
For rebellion is as of the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is an iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. See, that's not Monty's commentary. That's the word of God, folks. God puts you in a position, and you don't follow what he's given you to do, and you go to your own ways, it will disappear. But this is the worst part. 1 Samuel 16, 14. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. And an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Let me read that again. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. And an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. God wanted obedience from Saul. God wants obedience from you and me. It hasn't changed. It's the same God. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He wants obedience from us. And if we're not obedient, what may be taken from us is the Spirit of God. He cannot reside where there's sin. As we sin, He must leave. If we don't ask Him back into our life, is He with you? Has He departed from you? Are you the walking dead today? Saul's disobedience was rebellion. Our disobedience is rebellion. So many people want to classify which sins. It's sin, folks. If God asked you to do something and you don't do it, you sinned. If God asked you to quit doing something and you keep doing it, it's sin. It takes care of A to Z. So you put whatever sin you want in there because every one of us are sinners and fall short of the glory of God. But are you repenting for the sin that you're doing? Because if you're not asking Him back in, you're a walking, you're a walking dead man right now. Right now. I need to take vacation more often. <laughs> Woo! Let's. Whew. Somebody said they wish. <laughs> Glory. Get the meaning of this. Saul never got to hear God again. Can we reach that point? We can't. The Lord took away Saul's blessing. You know, Saul's issues accumulated and accumulated and accumulated because he never looked at what he was doing wrong in the beginning. And that's what we do. We do this. That's why the Word of God is here. These are lessons learned. Bible stands for basic instructions before leaving earth. Get it right or you're not going to go with heaven. You're going to go to hell, okay? Okay, don't put that in your notes and tell everybody that's what it really stands for and I'm teaching that. It's just a, it's a great acronym. But the Lord took away... His blessings. I don't want to be like Saul. And I certainly don't want anybody in here or any other church or even my enemies to be like Saul. I don't want anybody to go to hell. But yet our churches are teaching tolerance. And there's dead men walking in the churches. And they go to church every Wednesday and Sunday. And they even pay their tithes. And they do all these things that we saw in Do You Believe? But is your actions really justifying that you are a true blood-bought saint? Or are you just a walking dead? I would rather hurt everybody's feelings and have an empty church. And then get their life right with the Lord. And never come back. As long as they get their life right with the Lord. Just quickly, uh, the remaining events of Saul's life, because of that spirit leaving, I mean, you know he was tormented by an evil spirit, but he was also tormented on the fact that David was to take his place. I do move around a lot. You don't have to do this when I'm, I'm gone, do you? <laughs> I notice when I watch Dustin and Randall, they just, they're pretty much in one place. You've got life easy with when I'm gone. <laughs> I can't sit still. Uh, the thought of David taking Saul's place tormented him. He hated David. You know, we do this today, folks. There's a lesson learned there, too. There's so many lessons here. Somebody gets blessed better than you think they deserve, so now you hate them. Come on, I got some north and south there. That person don't deserve that. Why didn't I get that? I love God. I pay my tithes. I do this. I do that. Woo! David was blessed, and Saul hated him for it. Saul hated him so much that he let one of his daughters marry David to try to snare him. Saul hated David so much he tried to kill Jonathan because Jonathan became David's friend. Tried to kill his own son, man. That's hatred. You know, he killed 85 priests just for feeding David. Mm. He was so hung up on that hatred. Somebody needs to hear this. So hung up and so focused on David 
and hating David for his blessings that he didn't even notice the Philistine army was building up all around him. And that was the final demise for him and his son. Because he wasn't focused where he needed to be. Some of us got an army building up around us right now because we're in our, we're, 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 we're soaked into this, I want it this way. It's got to come back that way. And where we need to be focused is on the cross and what Jesus Christ did for us and tell him we're sorry for our problems, not somebody else's. But we're, we're sorry for what we're doing and to please change us. Man, life gets a lot better as soon as you do that. <laughs> a lot better. Guess what? You become a live man again. You're not a walking dead man. The third and final person is, uh, is Samson. Man, everybody knows Samson. The he-man. Judges 16. 18 through 22. Y'all know this story. This is the third time around. Okay, he's, he's already told her twice what the secret was. But in 18, and when Delilah saw that he had told her his, all his heart... He told her the hair. She sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he hath showed me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came unto the hour and brought money in their hand. And she made him sleep upon her knees. And she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. And she said, The Philistine be upon thee, Samson. And he woke up out of his sleep and said, I will go out as other times before and shake myself and he wist not that the Lord was departed from him you know the rest the Philistines took him put his eyes out brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters and brass and he did grind in the prison house Howbeit his hair did start growing back after he was shaven some of you may be thinking that you were a Samson some of us may think we're Samson right now. Got that self-confidence that what we can do. Maybe occasionally giving God the glory because we're around some Christians. But down, down deep or in here, we're like, I did this. I made this. I accomplished this. Samson did. Amen. Samson wasn't tricked. This was the third time. He knew what she was going to do. But he let his emotions get involved because she said, if only you loved me, you would tell me your secret. He just melted for another Philistine. It's the third Philistine woman. He should have learned something there too. He's a slow learner. Just don't say that. <coughs> Philistine women were not believers. He's anointed of God. Has the power of God that's given him the power to do these things. But yet he keeps going back to the non-believers. The Philistines. Somebody need to hear that. You know, he, he managed to have a pretty straight life. And that's the way it is for us too, folks. If, if we can relate to anybody here out of, out of these three, Samson's probably the easiest one to relate to. Because Samson went 20 years with minimal problems, but yet kept sinning. He didn't ask. He didn't repent. He didn't ask for forgiveness for those. He continued to do those. And we all fall prey to some sin. But the question is, after we have whatever sin it is, fallen prey to, do we feel like dirt? Do we feel grungy? Do we say, Lord, forgive me? Please help me not do that again. It could be shouting at your spouse. A to Z, folks. It don't have to be these, these specific sins that everybody else harps on. Those are important too, but all sins. When you sin, and you know it's wrong, because you feel the conviction, do you say, Lord, forgive me. That was wrong. And then go tell the individual I'm sorry I yelled at you. Dustin, the next time we do on failure again I'll let you do it anyway. Yeah. Amen. Amen. What if someone thinks you meant to hurt them and you didn't? You should talk to them. You should let them, And God will let you know who you need to see, who you need to talk to. But if you don't, then you sin. If he tells you to go see someone. He told his secret. And he knew what he was doing. Samson thought he could handle it. He believed that he could handle it. And he got up and he did not. He wist not that the Spirit of the Lord had left him. Can we know every time the Spirit of the Lord leaves us? Or can we not know 
at some point because we become so self-confident. Are you a dead man walking? See, dead men walking a lot of times don't know the Spirit of God's left them. And they could be the most righteous, quote-unquote, person in the church. I've known more than one person. I know I'm going to get some north and south as testimony. But I, I, I know of one person that sticks in my mind. I used to go to church with years ago. That was obviously by her actions at the church. Was more mature than anyone else there. She loved the Lord. Boy she raised her hands. She did all kinds of things for God. But yet before we got out of the church parking lot. Nearly every Sunday I could hear her screaming in her phone. At family members. <laughs> if there's a screamer in here that was for you Samson wasn't fooled he wasn't tricked he wasn't deceived just like Adam he knew the decisions he was making and as I said we all make mistakes we all fall prey but then do we ask God back in because the Spirit's left. The last, fra the last part of verse 20 is probably another one of the saddest statements. Just like with uh, Adam when he was sent out. Just like with Saul when the Spirit of God left him. Here, but he did not know that the Lord had left him. You see the, you see the similarities here. You see that this is over and over. And there's three. And anytime there's three of anything, you need to really take note. God's not changed. Don't become a walking dead man. And if you are, don't leave as a walking dead man today. Because once God leaves us, we are walking dead men. Amen. Let me give you three applications in closing from this last story. But all of them apply unless we deal with our problems. Unless we deal with our problems. Unless we deal with our problems. They'll come back to haunt us again. And again. And again. Number two. Unless we learn the difference between being empowered by the Holy Spirit. And thinking we have control. Over the power given to us. We're going to fail. Just like Sam. All, all of them did. Including, including Samson. Do we truly give God all the glory. And thank him daily. Why is it that we always seem to not know what we had till we lose it? Why is it that we seem to not know where we were till we slide into the pit that's destined for hell? We take things for granted that God's given us and we're, we ask for more when we should be just thanking Him for what we have. The last one, unless we yield our sexual desires completely to God, which Samson didn't do, we're going to fall prey to the Delilahs of this world. That goes for women too. And probably Delilah's too. I don't know. I said nowadays. But anyway. We have to give that over because that's a fleshly desire. We've got to give it over to God. So are we dead men walking? There's some people in here that's dead men walking today. I guarantee you. God has shown you a specific sin. Maybe he's shown some of you more than one. But God has shown you a specific sin that you need to repent of. There's actually, most likely, with this many people in here, somebody that's already realized that they may have never truly ever give their life to the Lord. Which means they're a walking dead man walking. I mean, they're a walking dead man. They, they, they've been a walking dead man all their life. And the Lord just showed you that you need to give your life to Him. As soon as you do that, you become alive. And you'll feel it. Amen. There's a lot of us, like I said, that's given our life to the Lord and we were self-confident in how we could get through it. But yet, because of this simple and short message, realize that we're walking dead men. So we're going to pray. We're going to pray for change. Glory to God. Is it a possibility that the Spirit of God has left you? Is it... Are you more sensitive to the people around you than the Holy Spirit? Because if you're more sensitive to the people around you and to your family and to your friends and co-workers than you are the Holy Spirit, you're a dead man walking. Because regardless of who you offend, the Holy Spirit should be who you're defending. 
And just because we don't see the Spirit of God, do we take Him lightly? Or do we truly want Him to be the, the God of everything? And if you truly do love God above all else, if so, is it evident to all the folks, including your family, around you? Before we pray, every head bowed, no eyes closed, and I am not going to ask anybody to come up here. I want you to stay where you're at. But if you have never given your life to the Lord, we're going to say a prayer where you can. Would you like to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and ask Him to be your Savior? Is there anybody in here? Amen. Glory to God. Got you, brother. Anybody else? Is there anyone in here? Because of this short message, you already know that you probably are a walking dead man and you definitely need to repent of something and ask Jesus Christ. To get, thank you. Amen. Glory. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for another short and powerful message about walking dead men. Lord, I just thank you for showing me myself specifically while going over the message the things I need to change Lord I just ask the individuals that have raised their hand and those that may not have raised their hand Lord but know that you would let them feel the peace and comfort let them feel the Holy Spirit ministering to them Lord as they are listening to this this prayer that they silently are asking you for forgiveness that you let them feel your forgiveness that they feel your love. That they know your presence is on them. Lord for the individuals that raise their hand. That do not and have never actually asked you into their life. Let them feel renewed in spirit, mind and body. Let them know without a doubt they're renewed. And they are a new creature for you today. Starting today. Lord for anyone that tried to quench the spirit. Don't allow it. We pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to minister to them. They will realize what needs to be changed in their life for your glory. Get on their knees and ask you to help them. Let everyone, before, before the sun goes down today, Lord, that heard this message, let everyone ask you to be the true Lord of their life forever and ever. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. <laughs>